Today, I'm going to talk about ring laser gyroscope. First, I want to mention the ring laser. A ring laser is a laser that its resonator has the form of a ring. There are usually more than two reflectors. And we use the highly refractive dielectric mirrors, which utilize total internal reflection to keep light away from escaping. One of the key points to understand here is unidirectional or bidirectional. What makes the ring laser special? Its ring resonator allows for two different propagation directions of light inside the cavity, and ring laser can choose whether to operate in unidirection or bidirection. If it is unidirectional, it will be easy to achieve single frequency operation with an optical isolator and there will be no standing wave interference pattern in the gain medium. However, this is not our focus today. Since bidirectional operation is required for ring laser gyroscope. Nowadays, Sonya gyroscope either use a coil or fiber optic cable to make the pass length very long, can be several kilometers, or simply use a ring laser cavity. Here's the sketch showing the latter technique. We need to use a highly stable monochromatic laser source with a closed pass. Usually people use helium neon laser since it is the most common type. Note that for ring laser gyroscope, the light is generated inside the device. There are also other system sensing rotation that have the light entering the setup from outside. There will be two counter-propagating laser beams traveling through the device. After getting back to the source, both of them will travel the same distance. Also, for lasing to occur, there must be an integral number of wavelengths fitted into the cavity. But what happens if there is angular rotation? Here comes the Sonya effect. We have a ring with radius r and refractive index n. By the way, Ring laser gyroscope can be a square, a triangle, a circle, or various shapes. But it's easier to illustrate this if we have a circle. For example, if we had the angular rotation going clockwise, the clockwise beam, starting from here, will travel this much to get back to the original point. So it's more than a loop. This distance is omega r delta t. Delta T is the time that the light takes to travel within the ring, 2 pi r divided by nc. And the counterclockwise beam will travel this distance less for one loop. We can see the path difference is 2 omega r delta T. Replacing delta T, it will be 4 pi r squared omega divided by nc. Because their passes differ, the frequencies differ too. Bit frequency, also known as Sanya frequency, can then be obtained, which is the difference between the two frequencies. As I mentioned, the whole pass must contain a whole number of wavelengths. The light beams that do not satisfy this will interfere with each other. And bit frequency can be thought of as an interference pattern in time. A detector that is rotating with the source will detect beats in the signal, so that eventually angular rotation can be measured in this way. We can see beat frequency is linearly proportional to angular rotation. In general, ring laser gyroscopes are widely used for navigation and accurate pointing. It can even measure Earth rotation. Aircraft has three of these to determine rotation in all three axes. On the other hand, ring laser gyroscope are among the most sensitive gyroscopes. Large area ring laser reach sensitivities at the level of pico rate per second. What is also marvelous is that this device shows a deep connection between mechanics and optics.